everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and in tonight's Hanukkah special, we are going to dye some bare hair yarn from Knit Picks. I know that many of you have been wanting me to dye this for a really long time, and I'm really excited to do it tonight. Um, when I knew that I wanted to explore all these different yarn bases for the Hanukkah special, I decided to save this one uh, so we can see what we can create on this base. Bare hair is 80% wool, 20% angora, and it is really soft, it's fingering weight, and I am really curious to see how it will absorb color. Tonight we are going to create a hand-painted colorway with some RIT liquid dyes that is going to be predominantly black but with some pops of fuchsia and teal. These 50 gram skeins only have one tie on them, so I'm going to add two more before the pre-soak. I am pre-soaking the bare hair yarn in 12 cups of water plus half a cup of white vinegar for at least 30 minutes. For the hand painting, I want to use the RIT Black Dye Straight. Um, I really want to try to achieve, whoa, that is, that is really, really thick. Um, that actually really does look like paint. Um, all right, we're going to try to use it straight. We might have some washing to do after, but we're going to give it a shot. For the other two colors, the fuchsia and the teal, I want to cut them a bit. Um, in each of these cups, I have half a cup of tap water, and I'm going to add one tablespoon of the fuchsia to one, and then wiping off the excess dye. There might be a tiny bit of red that goes in with the teal, but I am okay with that. Let's shake it up. And then one tablespoon of this teal um, in here. And my hope is that we will be able to um, get bright teal, bright fuchsia, but maybe they will be a little less dark than the black. At least that is my hope. <laughs> so if we stick that, stick that in, we've got black, fuchsia, and teal. And I think I might end up wanting to add some more water to these two. The black looks very, very black. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add, I think, a quarter of a cup of more water to each of those. I am going to hand paint the colors today using some foam brushes. And I'm going to start with one in real time, and then I'll probably speed up the others. Um, I'm curious about this black. Um, I did wring out a lot of the excess dye, or sorry, the excess pre-soak water. So the yarn is damp, um, it's still wet, but it's not dripping. And I have a feeling that we are going to need to do a fair amount of painting um, to get this color onto the yarn. But I just sort of wanted to look at the black before I came and Tate took a closer look at the bright color. So my very rough inspiration for today's yarn is the, okay, this is going to be um, sort of nice and pale in comparison, but my inspiration is sort of the, you know, when you have lit your candles, you turn the lights off, and you have the bright spot in the room that is the Hanukkah candles, and then the rest is sort of in darkness. Um, I could go for, you know, a yellow and orange that would be something more like firelight, but I decided to go for the pink and teal um, just to, um, you know, have the, this inspiration not be too, too literal. <laughs> but 
Um, these colors are feeling actually almost a little muted versus bright right now, but there is, I think, going to be some nice contrast between the teal, the fuchsia, um, and then all of the black. Um, I'm not sure what night of Hanukkah it is, but maybe if I have these five stripes of color, maybe I should make sure that this airs on the fourth night. Um, I'm not sure yet what the, the, the nightly progression will be um, as I go about releasing the videos, but um, so far, I mean, the I know I'm going to have a lot of leftover dye here, um, <laughs> but the colors seem to be going on, and just with doing both sides, I think I'm getting penetration through this 50 gram skein, at least when it comes to the pink and the teal. But from my three quarters of a cup, um, that did not use very much color at all. And now I want to paint black onto the rest. I suppose I could go, I could make this a little bigger. Uh, yeah, why don't I go ahead and go for nine? Well, well, this isn't gonna be the last night colorway, but let's go for as if we had nine candles. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I did have a lot of vinegar in here. I'm not sure how much these colors will spread or will not spread. Um, I have only, I think I've only hand painted with the writ colors once. Um, and that was way back in an early Dye Pop Weekly episode. Um, but even though I have done that, I hand painted with it once, I have dyed with it other times. So um, there might be a fair amount of bleeding, um, but I certainly have not dyed an Angora blend before. So I am curious how it will turn out. Okay. And now I need to start adding this black onto the rest. And I might end up needing, I did not measure the amount of black that I took. But actually painting this on does feel rather interesting. Um, I filled the cup up. I'm not sure if it's a quarter cup, maybe approximately a quarter cup. I am going to cut it with water because it is thick. Um, so it's now cut about one to one with water to make it a little more liquid. I think that there we go. I'll now have a bit of an easier time getting this onto the yarn. I think that because I'm doing this big section of, bla of black, um, maybe for some of the others I'll decide to do a squeeze bottle for the part that is down beyond near our, I guess near our colored section. Um, but this is the area where I want there to be the most precision. If you wanted to make sure that there was no spread between the colors and that your, where you added the colors, the color transitions were really sharp, then you would probably want to use some kind of thickener, uh, like guar gum or something. But, uh, so this might not be like perfectly, perfectly sharp, but um, I'm doing my best to not let the black come on this brighter section. Um, I have, oh, and that's going through pretty well. I have protected my work surface with plastic wrap. And once I have hand painted all of this yarn, I will wrap it up and steam it to set the color. Uh, but I just want to, um, I guess, show a little bit in real time about the turning this black. And I wonder if the black breaks a little bit. Um, it almost looks like it might that I'm seeing some other hues come in there. 
But the fun thing about a colorway like this is depending on what you knit with it, you could get something that is like a spiral, like you'll get a lot of black and then that pop of color. Um, and I think that it would be really, really cool looking. Very similar to an effect you get on when you're doing a broken colorway. Something like broken, um, like broken violet or breaking any food coloring colors. Um, just because uh, sometimes you just end up with like a little section of one color at one end. Um, I do know that I will very likely need to flip this to do the other side of the black, but I've never hand painted and gotten a true, true black before, so I am pretty excited. But I guess in contrast, on this 50 gram skein, I have used up almost all of that black that I mixed. So just for reference, when I used barely, you know, I'm going to have for all six of these 50 gram skeins, I'm going to absolutely have plenty, plenty of the teal and pink. But when it comes to the black, um, I'm going to, oh yeah, be needing a bit more of it to get a true black all the way around. So I do wonder how quickly, the nice thing is if it goes on to the neighboring skeins a little bit right now, that is totally fine. Um, I'm curious how you know, solid this black will be or if it'll read a different color. And if this application I'm doing, okay, that actually looks like it'll be pretty good. There's some areas that look blacker than the rest, but um, I'm glad that I diluted the dye a bit. It made it a bit easier to um, apply this and I have a feeling there'll be a fair amount of washing. Um, I've learned from some of my other videos that like, you know, a tablespoon of this dye can go a pretty long way. So, but you need a lot of dye for a black. So, we shall see. This is a very, very much a learning, learning process. So, anyway, but I think that that coverage is pretty good. But I did, in this first game, use up all of that black that I had mixed. So I would say probably about a half a cup of liquid at least for the entire length. And now I'm going to speed up the rest. Um, I don't think I'll show the entirety of all the, the black, but at the very least, the, I'll speed up the colored section and then part of the black application.
running out of dye. This is about what I have left. Um, and <laughs> the rest, uh, you know, I think the whole bottle is about one cup of dye. So I just padded this to try to like spread some of these colors through a bit, but I might need to get more dye. And I have a feeling I might regret going so heavy on this. Now, I have no idea. I hope that this is more of a black than a brown. Um, I have another colorway this week, which I think will be coming out likely tomorrow where I was going for black and it might be a little less black. Um, yeah, there's probably gonna be a lot of rinsing that I need to do here. So close, so, so, so close. Okay, let's see. Let's just try squeezing these and see if I can't do something about this without needing to run to the store. Um, I mean, I have a feeling that, I mean, you see all that color when I squeeze it? You see all that black? Um, we might not get a true black. At the very least, this is going to help us get a little more even coverage. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, I don't want to squeeze it up too high, but I do want to try. This might end up rating fairly brown. I don't know. I don't think I've used this color before. Um, I think that when I first got this, I went with gray um, instead of black. It all depends on how much it binds to um, the fiber, but I will say that whatever color this is, whether or not it is in fact black, I think I do have a good coverage of it um, on on here. All right, I'm now going to use the plastic wrap that is protecting my work surface to wrap up this yarn. And in particular, I do want to protect this, um, this rainbow end. So, I think that when it comes to this belly roll, I'm going to start rolling up the black. Um, and then I've got this plastic wrap down here because I don't want to squeeze. I don't mind if like black squeezes into each other, but um, I do sort of want to keep this rainbow portion protected. Okay. Probably should have done this as two separate jelly rolls, but here's my steamer basket and I'm placing it in the black on the bottom and the color on top. And now I am going to go ahead and let this steam on the stove top for 40 minutes. I am really nervous that the black is going to be too concentrated, but I think that if I diluted it more, there definitely would not be a black. So cross your fingers for me. All right, 40 minutes are up and I'm gonna turn off the heat on the steamer basket. I'm seeing some purple where I think our teal and pink have combined. Um, and well, the black looks like it could be pretty black, but we're not gonna know. I'm gonna let this stain here and cool a little bit before I remove it and unwrap it a bit to cool more. Okay, this is still fairly hot, but I do want to try to remove it, oh dear, um, without making too big of a mess. I definitely want this to cool before we go wash it, but I am going to unwrap it a bit and ooh, it's safe to say that that is looking quite black right now hopefully this will help it 
cool off, but ooh, before it was brown, right now that is absolutely looking black, black, black. I might have overdone it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start the wash with two. Um, and you can see there is a lot of black. Now, the one thing that I do want to point out about these red liquid dyes is that they are meant for cotton and wool, so they can stain. And oh boy, that is a lot of color. Um, good news that the yarn is looking black. Um, the less good news is that I have a feeling I wasted a lot of color. Um, but while we're at it, let's, oh, I have the more colored portions just sort of running under the water. I know in general it's not good to have things under running water, but um, I know we have a lot of stuff that we need to rinse out here today. Oh, that is, well, it's also very purple. Um, we'll see if things are starting to look at all lighter <laughs> in June. If I did not think there was going to be this much rinsing, then I might have started with all six. But, all right, we're getting a little bit better. Um, I do want to remind myself and all of you at home that this is not a super wash yarn. Um, okay, and I can tell that there's a part of this that does not look true, true black. But a lot of it is looking rather dark. And while there's so little bleeding, it is significantly less than where I started with that black, black cloud. So that is encouraging. Um, oh yeah, this is like, compared to like how dark that started, I mean, this is still bleeding, but next to nothing, next to nothing. All right, this is, this is good. I'm very, very happy. Okay, I'm gonna now add some clear disc soap. Um, it'll help some of the dye and bind sometimes. It just also helps just rinse in general. But yeah, I mean, we've got some bleeding, but all things considered, not bad, not bad. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep rinsing until this water runs clear. Um, if it takes more than a couple more rinses, I will come back to let you know, but, you know, each time I think it's getting paler and paler. So, yeah, unless there's anything notable, I'm going to go ahead and wash the other four off camera, and then I'll come back to show you the finished dry yarn. This colorway is a lot of fun. We've got, I would say, at least three quarters of the skein is dark, dark, moody, almost black. And then we have these brighter pops. I don't think you can tell that I had hand painted for the nine candles on the last night of Hanukkah, but I do think that we have some really nice purple, pink, and teal um, variation on the brightly colored end. As for the black, I pop something black that's in there. Yeah, it still looks pretty black. I don't think it's brown. There are definitely some lighter patches. I see some patches in here that feel navy, a couple that might be brownish. Um, so those areas feel a little bit more like smoke than the darkness and the black. Um, and so, I did use an entire bottle of the Rit Liquid Black um, for this project. And I was wondering, because a lot of dye rinsed out, if it was overkill. And I don't know. 
I mean, clearly there's areas that aren't quite really black and I did run out so I wasn't able to have like the complete application to those areas. So I think that this is something that needs to be played around more with to see how much you can dilute it to get away with a full black. Alternatively, should I have left it steam longer? And would more time uh, for the yarn to be in contact with the dye, would that give us the deeper, deeper black color? Either way, I think that this variegated tonal black section is beautiful and it's gonna bring some really nice dimension into whatever this colorway would turn into. When it comes to the paler section, uh, there is some variability in here. Ultimately, they are all very similar to one another. It's just if you were gonna dye multiple skeins and then use them together in a hat or something, you might wanna consider alternating every few rounds so that way there's not a huge difference when you shift from one skein to the next. However, if you're using this for some planned pulling, you can get some cool spirals or something, then you know you might need to do a little more thinking as you plan it out. But I think that ultimately this yarn could turn into something absolutely spectacular. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and this is yet another colorway that I can see myself trying to repeat in the future. Um, I really like the thought of having one color over most of the skein and a little section of a different color because depending on the project that can turn into something really, really cool. Um, I would like to give a shout out to the Unicorn Farts tutorial. Um, I know that um, they have one, they have a whole tutorial using guar gum and rainbows to do something that's a very similar effect and I think it's a very famous tutorial out there. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the rest of the 2018 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Um, every night I am sharing a brand new yarn dyeing video after sunset and it's eight different yarn bases, eight different dyeing techniques, and eight different final colors. And I'm having an absolute blast. Besides special weeks like this one, I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week year round and you want to make sure to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you don't miss any of it. And finally, if you're a huge Chemnitz fan and would like to support us on an additional level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, you can find a link in the video description and the iCard. Patreon is a platform where viewers can support the creators that they really enjoy um, and get access to cool perks like behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new yarn dyeing videos, Etsy coupons, and more. Thank you so much for watching.